The long-awaited patch 1.2 is finally here for Cyberpunk 2077, and it's out now for consoles, Google Stadia, and PC. And it introduces hundreds, I'm serious, literally hundreds of updates and fixes for the game. The big takeaway from the patch notes is that there aren't a lot of big changes that will be notable upon launching Cyberpunk 2077, but instead what you'll allegedly find is a more stable experience across the board. We'll talk about that experience in a second, but there are some broad stroke changes, but also a lot of very specific updates too. I personally don't ever remember getting blocked when drinking and chatting with the veterans in the We Gotta Live Together quest, but apparently somebody did, so your experience will probably vary when booting up the game again. Now, we're not going to go through every single change, because that would take so long, but let's take a look at some of the biggest fixes and updates that CD Projekt Red has for us. First off, driving seems to be a big focus here in patch 1.2. A new steering sensitivity slider has been added to all platforms, allowing you to fine-tune the steering speed for all vehicles, which CDPR says is particularly useful for keyboard drivers like yours truly. They've also added a rocking and rotating feature to vehicles, which should help you squirm out of a situation where your vehicle gets stuck, and a few changes to improve overall controlling and handling on various cars and bikes. The next big change that almost everyone is guaranteed to notice is to the NCPD. Anyone who's been spotted committing a crime knows that the best spot to expect a cop to spawn is literally right behind you. But maybe that's about to change. Right at the top of the patch notes is a single line saying the NCPD spawn radius for when the player commits a crime has been increased which should offer a more natural approach when being hunted by cops. It's not clear whether this will affect how easy it is to escape if you're in a vehicle, but hopefully this new fix will make the NCPD actually feel like a response to your actions instead of just an infinite supply of murder bots. There is a slew of fixes that will hopefully go unnoticed found under the Stability and Performance tab. Most notably, it contains a lot of variations of the phrase, reduces the number of crashes. The last time I checked, less crashes is in fact a good thing, so whatever they're doing to make it happen, great. This update also enabled ray tracing for machines using AMD graphics cards, so that'll be pretty if you have the hardware to support it. There are a few other PC specific tweets, but the change that stood out the most to me is the ability to unbind dodge from your WASD movement keys. So many times I've been tapping the button to sneak around an enemy only to dodge out into the open because I pressed the key too fast. There are a bunch of other binding options as well, which is always welcome in my book. It is worth noting though, Cyberpunk 2077 does have a bit of a habit of receiving a patch that could cause some performance issues, and there's currently a Reddit thread where PC players are claiming to have significantly worse performance than they had before the patch dropped. I, myself, while capturing this footage, didn't notice anything out of the ordinary, but future performance reviews will definitely provide a clearer picture here. Finally, while console players will see a few graphical fixes here and there, what you won't find is anything specifically targeting frame rate. There are some fixes here that could very well end up altering the frame rate in one way or another, but until we start to see actual performance reviews come out that can measure these changes more accurately, it remains to be seen if patch 1.2 will make Cyberpunk 2077 on a base Xbox One or PlayStation 4 more enjoyable. So far, this patch seems to be nothing but good news for Cyberpunk 2077, especially when the next steps on the roadmap are free DLC and the eventual free upgrade to PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. Stay tuned for our full 1.2 performance review to see how it fully stacks up, but in the meantime, what do you think? Is patch 1.2 enough to get you to return to the game, or maybe finally give it a go for the first time? Make sure to sound off in the comments below, and of course for everything on the future of Cyberpunk 2077, make sure to keep it right here on IGN.